Thanks, Philip. I think I can quote the, the joke which was proposed by the then head of uh, Swiss Prot, Yanni uh, Senarius, who was suggesting that uh, the Swiss take care of the ordered proteins and you can leave the, the disorder to the Italians. <laughs> I hope that at least the organization so far has been uh, everything fine. So. Um, in this case, I cannot thank the organizers, but I can thank the scientific committee for, for choosing to give this presentation here. So I'll be talking about the bio-curation in um, this prot, which is a manually curated database for intrinsically disordered proteins. And um, first of all, this prot, and here you have uh, the current, uh, what the cur currently the, the web page looks like, is the major repository for manually curated data of intrinsically disordered proteins and, and intrinsically disordered regions. So basically you can think of these as uh, the parts of the proteome which are more or less moving and in some extreme cases behaving like cooked spaghetti in water. So they're just flopping around and still they have their, their, their functions. They're widely overlooked so far. I think now with AlphaFold 2 it's become obvious that you have uh, about 40% of the human proteome for instance which falls into this category. So we have our work cut out uh, for a number of years in order to try to annotate them all and to curate them. And uh, one of the peculiarities of Disprot is that it relies both on the work of professional curators, a few of them, but also largely on community bio-curators who screen the scientific publications and instruct and synthesize all the relevant information about IDPs and IDRs. And uh, here it covers experimentally validated evidence about structural and functional aspects of IDPs and IDRs. So really the emphasis is on the experimental um, validation. Uh, this part itself, the last publication was in uh, the Nucleic Acids Research Database issue in early 2022. And we also have uh, a current protocol about how to use the database itself. So, this prot was originally established by Keith Dunker in Indiana University, and the first publication that dates back to 2005. Uh, it has been hosted in the US for about a dozen years until this prot version 6, which was the last update of the original database in 2013. And then, uh, after a couple of years where there was not much going on, we have been Finally, uh, moving the database to the University of Padua, so it's currently hosted here. And it has been uh, put on this new, um, at least for this broad new, community curation paradigm. So we had uh, EU funding to organize the community curation, which came across uh, over a dozen, dozen different laboratories in as many different countries. So the first thing which happened in 2017 is that this prot itself got completely re-annotated and some 200 new proteins added, a new website, so we brought some new technology to it. Then, in, since then, every two years we're releasing, more or less constantly, um, new, new versions of this prot. Uh, we've been adding uh, the IDP ontology initially and then we have more recently moved to uh, ECO and uh, GO annotations, I'll be showing on the following slides. And we also have thematic releases, which are one big addition. Here you see more or less the data growth between the various releases of this product itself. So it's been uh, growing steadily. And at the moment we are at about 2,500 different uh, proteins which are being annotated. So, um, since this is about uh, bio-curation, and in particular since we have a commun uh, community curation component which is quite uh, strong, we have been developing various tools in order to, to help support the curators. So, for once we have the uh, Disparate Curation Manual, which is available, and we have been establishing an e-learning course uh, which is available through the Elixir Slovenia platform. Uh, one peculiarity here is that this e-learning course, and here you see the structure of the various modules, including a final assessment, the certificate of, compl of completion. We have that both in English and in Spanish for a very simple reason that um, we have uh, two staff exchange programs running with Latin America, in particular Argentina. So we had many interested parties in Argentina and hence 
uh, one of our uh, curators translated the whole material to Spanish. Um, beyond that, and the e-learning course is kind of the basics in order for people to qualify to do the community curation. Then we have one-on-one -on -one training sessions via Zoom, and there's a Discord workspace available in Slack. And we also have a curation feedback during the revision, revision process itself. So how does it work, uh, the curation process? Well, first of all, we have our scientific papers and there's a bio curator, which in many, case, in many instances is a community curator. So these are people who know about intrinsically disordered proteins, but uh, not necessarily so much about all the computational technology. So these uh, extract the information from the scientific paper, it becomes a draft disparate entry, and we have a few people who are the paid curators acting as reviewers. In case of minor errors, the reviewers are asked for modifications, and so we have the cycle potentially a couple of times. Once it's okay, it gets validated and uh, goes into the next release, which is uh, generally every six months. And uh, sometimes it can get uh, rejected if the uh, annotation is wrong. One of the problems with intrinsically disordered proteins is that you have a plethora of different ma experimental methods and sometimes uh, the results fall into that gray area where you have to draw the line to decide whether something uh, is a valid case for a disordered region or not. So this may sometimes happen, it's actually quite rare. Um, the disparate releases themselves, um, they have been coming out more or less steadily. As I mentioned, we have uh, thematic data sets where we try to focus on certain uh, aspects which are in particular related to different types of pathologies. Also, having the strong links to Latin America, we have a dedicated data set about neglected tropical diseases. Then we have been releasing ones about autophagy-related proteins, cancer proteins, viral proteins extracellular matrix and unicellular toxins and antitoxins. These are regularly described in the database um, updates. Uh, the way that the disparate entry itself looks like is um, that we have the basic information on, on the top of the page, it's shown here with several cross-references. Some of this information is pulled from directly from um, Uniprot. Then we have the feature viewer here at the, at the center, which shows a, a simplified representation for the regions being annotated as disordered, and combined also with some additional information like the domains from PFAN, for instance, or for the last year or so, we also have the AlphaFold DB predictions, uh, which are pulled from AlphaFold DB, and where we, we color the regions according to the, to the, the PLDDT score knowing that uh, the, the poorly predicted regions are usually the ones corresponding to disorder, roughly speaking. So this gives you the overview. And then we have the various annotated pieces of evidence. So one of these snippets is available for each of these entries over here. And um, the actual details of the disparate annotation have been growing over the years. So we've been adding various types of, of features. First, there is a... Uh, the idea for, for this particular evidence and what type of uh, aspect is being annotated. We have the specific function terms and the method being used, more on that in, in a second. We always uh, have the scientific publication, so if someone is interested they can look up this publication and see where the, the information comes from. We do have cross-references to different databases, mainly Uniprot and the Proton Data Bank. Uh, the statement describing the annotated aspect, which is usually pulled directly from the paper itself, so it says that the statement was in the results section, and this is what the curator had to say about it. Um, and then mm, one more recent addition are the experimental details, uh, which I'll be describing on the following slides, and we um, acknowledge the curator and the reviewer of this entry which is also important to um, be able to track who's been doing what. So regarding uh, the controlled vocabularies we have been using in Disprot over the last uh, two years or so, we have been collaborating with ECO in order to the evidence and conclusion ontology in terms to expand the various types of uh, experimental evidence which is available and encoded in ECO, so several new terms were added and we're very happy to be able to use it completely for, to cover all the methods we have in Disprot. 
And somewhat more recently, we have been uh, working with gene ontology in order to come up with several more specific functional terms, which are relevant for the, uh, for the disordered function. So these can be related to all three different uh, aspects of, of the Go annotation, but mainly it's about molecular functions. So there are several of them which have been updated and uh, which are now included in gene ontology and therefore all also propagated all the way to various uniprot entries. Um, the latest thing which, have, uh, which has been added is um, the MIADE as a controlled vocabulary. So MIADE is the minimum information about the disorder experiments and in particular this provides information about the experimental protocols, sample components and sequence properties that might affect the interpretation of experimental results. This was important because in several publications you don't have the wild type protein in its natural conditions, but there can be protein modifications or other interacting proteins present, and so keeping track of the experimental conditions was really an important element. It has been a lot of work be behind the scenes and a lot of consultation with the community but we are very happy that uh, the paper will be um, coming out soon in uh, Nature Methods. So that will be the description. Within the disparate annotation itself, this is uh, the, the curator interface. What we have been adding recently in order to capture all the MIADI information are the additional fields about sequence construct, experimental conditions, and experimental components. And I wanted to briefly walk you through these so that you to get a feeling for the type of information which is stored there. Um, the sequence construct uh, can, have, can contain various types of alterations, so whether it's mutations, post-translational modifications, tags, labels and dyes, non-standard amino acids. These are captured in this uh, first category of additional fields here. The experimental conditions themselves, generally speaking, disprot only captured um, disordered regions under physiological conditions, but now we can be much more explicit. So we can encode the pH, temperature, pressure, and oxidation reduction potentials. This is important because sometimes, especially for disordered regions, you change the pH or the temperature and you can get different results. So it makes it easier to track. And for the experimental components, we, have, we are now capturing whether there's an interacting antibody, lipid, membrane, like acid protein, small molecule, or in cell experiment, so that this can also influence the presence or not of the disorder. Just think about a region which undergoes a folding of one binding event, so you may have contradictory information. In one publication, it may be listed as disordered. In another one, it could be bound to its target, and therefore there could be a PDB structure, for instance. So now we are able to capture this type of information here you see an example for one uh, of the regions where the protein is modified in two different positions and there is an interacting protein present uh, which has to be taken into consideration. So um, last but not least I wanted to show you an example of how this is affecting the disprot uh, annotation in certain cases. Previously we had these tags about ambiguous sequences or ambiguous con conditions. And this is the example for calcineurin. This is the way it was uh, um, encoded in this part before we implemented MIADI, and now this is uh, captured uh, in a much better way where we have experimental details and we uh, can now encode the fact that it was a tag at the C terminus. The protein had been modified in this position. There, were, uh, there was a fluorescent dye label for position 3. 89, and there, were, there was an interacting protein present. So with this we are able to capture in a much richer way all the different conditions for the disordered proteins which were extremely important and therefore um, it is a, um, an important step forward. Of course I should caution that at the moment the, the full MIADA information is available only for a subset of disparate entries we are working on expanding this and covering all the entries, in particular the new entries we, we have. And um, yeah, so the, both the eco terms and the MIADA annotation avoid the ambiguities and provide more information for the entries. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention.
Hello, thank you. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more about the structural information that you provide? Um, you mean? It's like uh, predicted by AlphaFold, that's... Uh, ah, this uh, one. Yeah. Okay, yes. So... Or if available, the, the um, relevant structures in the protein data bank? So the AlphaFold uh, is pulled directly from AlphaFoldDB. And uh, we have a paper published last year. One of the things I didn't mention is that the disparate data is actually used as ground truth for a critical assessment, which is called KITE, the Critical Assessment of Intrinsic Disorder Predictions. Um, we ran the second round last year. The first one was published in Nature Methods two years ago. And one of the things we noticed is that uh, the regions of AlphaFold predicted with low confidence which in this case would be these guys over here, so the N and C termini, they correlate strongly with this order. So we have the thresholds, which we identified on how, how to cut, cut off. So this is a uh, shorthand for indicating that the N and C terminus is very likely to be disordered. And that's just uh, derived from the fact that the alpha fold predictions in those regions are ribbons, essentially, without much in terms of local structure. Okay? Hi, uh, I was wondering how do you attract community curator and uh, also what's the proportion of regular versus community curator that you have? That's a very good question. So how do we attract community curators? Well, we had some uh, EU funding for this, which is a, a cost action, which is there just for the networking part of science. And there you have many different countries represented. So. We were offering this as, a, um, as an activity there. It was about disorder. There was a working group about disordered proteins, and we found several experimentalists interested. And of course, uh, we were telling them if they curate at least X entries, then they would become a co-author on the next uh, disparate paper, and that is always, of course, enticing. The second, thing, the second answer to this is that you may have seen the presentation about Epicurean this morning. Epicuron was derived from our experience with disparate community curation. So we just packaged that as a separate spin-off project because uh, we learned a couple of things about how to keep people uh, engaged. But basically, it's finding your community, talking to them, and getting them interested in depositing the data. Yes. Yeah, th th thanks. That was really great to see that you're capturing additional information about the experimental conditions. Um, the, my, my question, though, is let's just say, hypothetically, uh, that I'm not an expert in disordered proteins and the kinds of experiments that are done. Is there, is, is there any thought about some guidance you might provide users to interpret, you know, what, what, are, the, what are the in vivo biological uh, ramifications of of, of, the, of that data and how will that influence my interpretation of what you have in the, in the in the database? Yeah, no, that's a very good point. So one of the things initially when we moved the database to Padova is that we got rid of some entries which were, uh, let's say, under non-physiological conditions. So one in the old days, one example for which was in this plot and is no longer there for this very reason was myoglobin. Myoglobin, apparently, if you put it under 1,000 bar of pressure and you take away the, the, the cofactor, it behaves like a molten globule. Is that the biologically meaningful information? Uh, we think not. So one key concept with this prod is that we annotate only disorder under physiological conditions. So all the entries are under physiological conditions and we will not enter the very strange ones. But now we have an added layer where you can work with things like different pH levels and this kind of thing. But your point is, is well taken that we should be um, highlighting this a bit more, where we draw some, some specific boundaries now that we have this experimental information. Thanks.